Welcome everyone, <clears throat> excuse me, to our How to Get Around in QuickBooks Online webinar as part of the Desktop Migrator series. My name is Alana Millis and I'm here today in Fort Worth, Texas and looking forward to helping you out with getting oriented in QuickBooks Online, seeing where things are a little different than desktop. If you've never been to one of our webinars before, welcome. My name is Alana Millis. I am a QuickBooks instructor. I teach webinars like the one you're in now, as well as help people answer their QuickBooks questions and solve their QuickBooks woes. I make video about QuickBooks desktop, QuickBooks online, and QuickBooks time. My formal training is in education and linguistics, but I've come to find my true love in QuickBooks and especially in helping other people come to love it or at least learn to appreciate it as much as I do. Okay, are you ready? We finally made it to the real beginning of our webinar. This webinar is designed for people who are joining QuickBooks Online from QuickBooks Desktop. So you know how to use desktop, you know where everything is, but you're moving your information to QuickBooks Online because of one reason or another, you are interested in particular features and you wanna learn the basics of how to find your customers, where to find your vendors, where's your item list, how are you supposed to write checks, right? Or maybe you just wanna know how the online banking feature works. So first, I wanna point out that this webinar is the second in a series of webinars. The first was an excellent webinar by my colleague Amy, uh, that she taught on how to move your company information to QuickBooks Online and how to get your new company set up once you get all your information in. And I'm actually gonna post a link to that in the chat right now. So I have a recording of that webinar that I'm gonna go into the chat and post for you to, you can copy this link and save it in your browser or in a Word document or something like that. So you can go back and rewatch that. And this webinar that we're in right now is really about finding your way around. So we're going to have other webinars that will go into more detail on features like online banking that I strongly encourage you to attend. And I'm going to point those out throughout. For now, I am going to send you also in the chat a link for where you can sign up for more webinars. So you'll find the rest of the webinars uh, that are in this desktop series, as well as other webinars that we teach just on QuickBooks Online and various functions like that. So the first thing we're gonna talk about in this webinar is how to get around in QuickBooks Online. So if you wanna know what all the different buttons do and what all the menus are for or where the menus are, right, we're gonna cover it. Then we're gonna talk about lists, right? You've got them in QuickBooks Desktop. So the question is, where can you find all that same information in QuickBooks Online? And then we're gonna talk about recording expenses and sales. So if you want to learn some basics for how the forms are different than what you would normally work with in QuickBooks Desktop, I've got you covered there. And then we're also going to look at a few places where you can customize reports, how you can save those customizations, and just in general where you can find your reports. And then I also have sprinkled throughout a few tips and tricks to kind of give you the best experience you can in QuickBooks Online because as we know, it looks very different than what you may be used to in QuickBooks Desktop, but there are a lot of similarities if you know where to look for them. So I'll show you how you can really make it work for you if, if desktop is something that you're really familiar with. Now, everything that we cover here is just kind of a cursory overview. We're going to be moving pretty quickly, but everything is covered more in depth in our other webinars. So for example, we're going to have an entire class next week just on sales transactions, money in. And then we have another class devoted to our money out transactions. Uh, we, if you're interested in diving deeper into any of those topics, I definitely recommend going into that link that I just sent in the chat and looking at those other classes as well. It's also especially true for online banking. If you switch to QuickBooks Online QBO because you wanna use the Banking Center, I highly encourage you to take the course that we're offering, I think in three weeks. It's another webinar that will take you through the ins and outs of how to use the Online Banking Center. And of course, we are here to answer your questions. So if you've got them, make sure you send them over at any time throughout the presentation. So now that we know where we're headed on our hike through QuickBooks, we're ready to get started. And we're gonna go ahead and start in QuickBooks Desktop. So I'm gonna pull up my QuickBooks Desktop account here. We are Buildem Inc. today, that's our company name. And as you know, you already work in QuickBooks Desktop to help you organize who you do business with, how you spend and receive money and what you sell. QuickBooks Online is gonna help you do all the same things. So let's say, just imagine with me for a moment, you show up to work on Monday morning and the 
first thing you do is check your customers' balances. You need to see who you need to call, right? Who you need to get some payments from. And in desktop, we know we can come to the homepage and click the customers label on the homepage, or you can come up to the top and select customers and choose the customer center, right? And you would do the same thing to check in with your vendor balances, right? You would go to vendors and select vendor center, right? And you see a similar looking list there. When you want to see reports about your business, you just select reports from the main menu and then you can run any of the reports that you need on information that you've already entered in QuickBooks. In desktop we know this top menu is how you access historical information about your business. You can get to anything you need from that menu. So what we're going to do is go ahead and pull up QuickBooks online to see how we can do the same thing. So this is our QuickBooks company online. Uh, we're in here with all the same information, all of our data pulled over and again, if you have any questions about how to get your data into QuickBooks and those things, Amy's webinar is great for that. I highly encourage you to watch that if you didn't attend last week. Okay, so we're in QuickBooks Online. Same story. You sit down on Monday morning and you log into QuickBooks Online. Everything in QuickBooks Online can be accessed from one of three menus. And the first menu is this nav bar that we see over here on the left. That's short for, of course, navigation, right? So the nav bar helps us access historical information. So if it's something that happened in the past, something that's already in QuickBooks, we can access that through the nav bar. So we could select here banking right? Or yours might say transactions to see the accounts that you've connected and then categorize as I scroll down here, any new transactions that are showing up here that you want to add to QuickBooks. If you select sales or yours might say invoicing, you're going to see a list of all of your different sales transactions, right? And you could use these bars along the top to filter it based on, you know, what has or hasn't been paid or what's overdue, things like that. If you wanted to see just invoices, you can click on the invoices tab across the top. From the customers tab, you can also see all of your customers along with their balances here. And we're gonna come back to look at this list again in a few minutes and explore some of the things that it can do. But back to the nav bar, you can also click on expenses to see a list of all of the expenses for your company when we're on expenses here. And we can also switch over to this vendors tab to see a list of all of our vendors and their balances. So uh, all the people that we buy things from the people that we've paid and potentially how much we owe them on bills and things like that. And so as we know, this is all information about things that have already happened, right? The projects tab that you see right here lets you track all the income and expenses associated with specific customers. You can actually even have multiple projects for one customer, kind of like you have with jobs in QuickBooks Desktop. And the projects tab is one of those really cool extra features that you get with QuickBooks Online because you get this project dashboard for each project and it's got visual representations of your income versus your costs and all this information. If I click on the project, I get this dashboard where I can look at transactions and project reports related to that actual project to help me kind of track the progress as I go. Back on the nav bar, we also have the payroll section where you can see a list of your employees. You notice I don't have any yet, but that's okay. You can also look at contractors. And if you have payroll through QuickBooks, if you run your payroll through QuickBooks, you'll also have your payroll information here as well. When we select our reports tab here, this is going to be our report center. Again, back to the idea that the nav bar is for historical information. You can run all of your reports here by selecting from the categories that you see. So if I scroll down here, I can see business overview reports. I can see these are all reports about people who owe me, my customers. I can see sales reports. I have uh, the reports for vendors who owe me. I have all my expense reports, sales tax employees, and then other accounting type reports and payroll. And I can choose from any of those lists, but if you don't want to go through those lists, you can actually search for the name of the report by just typing it in here. And that's really handy as well. Now you'll also notice that I've got my balance sheet and profit and loss. Those are already in my favorites list. And you can make any of these reports a favorite by just clicking on the little star icon and it'll move it right into that favorite section for you. Now, if you track sales tax with QuickBooks, you're also going to select the taxes option here. And if you use payroll through QuickBooks, your payroll tax information will be in this window as well. 
From the accounting screen, you're gonna be able to see your chart of accounts. And just like in QuickBooks Desktop, the chart of accounts is the hub of your accounting system. And we have an entire class dedicated just to the chart of accounts called Accounting 101, which we highly recommend if you're at all interested in how different transactions affect your accounts and reporting. And the chart of accounts is gonna have all the same account types that you see in desktop, bank, credit card. Uh, as I scroll down here, you can see I've got some fixed assets. I've got my income accounts here. If I click next, that moves me onto the next page of accounts and I can see my cost of goods sold and expense accounts. So I scroll to the bottom. I'm gonna go back to the first page. I can also filter this list here by just typing in the name of an account. So if I'm looking for advertising, I'm gonna find that here by just searching for that as well, right? Okay, and we're gonna come back to the chart of accounts. We're not, we're not done with that yet. We'll see a few other things in there. But back to the nav bar, if I click on this light gray bar that you see here and scroll down, I have a few other things to point out. So the My Accountant tab is really cool because you can invite your accountant by typing in their email and they can access your information remotely. So they'll be able to log in with their own login and actually see your books so they can kind of help keep you on track. That's one of the big advantages to using QuickBooks Online. You can also take a look at the Apps tab, right, which is where you can really expand the functionality of QuickBooks Online with uh, different apps that are compatible with QuickBooks Online and can help you out with those other business functions. And there's of course a few other fun things in the nav bar that you can explore like we have tasks and we've got cash flow and workflows and time and budgets but we're trying to stick to the basics today so you can get up and running. So the question is this, how do you access historical information in QuickBooks Online? If you said nav bar, here, you're staying caught up. So let's go ahead and keep going now. Knowing where to find all that historical information is great, right? But your business doesn't just run on its history. New things are happening every day. Now, if I come back to desktop here, I'm back in my QuickBooks desktop account, and I want to record a new invoice, I'm just going to click the Create Invoices icon right on the home page, right? Or if I need to write a check, I'm just going to come over here and select Write Checks. So how do you actually enter new transactions in QuickBooks Online? Well, if you remember, I said there's three main menus. We've talked about one. We talked about the nav bar. So we're going to go back into QuickBooks Online and look at our second menu, and that's the New button, which you see right here in the top left corner just above the nav bar bar. And this button is where you can go whenever you need to enter new transactions. So if you need to write a check, you just select check. Or when your customer walks in and orders a new service, you enter an invoice or a sales receipt, right? And all these transactions are organized kind of like the home page by who you do business with. So we see all of our transactions for customers, all of our transactions for our vendors here. Then we have employee transactions. And then we have some other transactions like we've got bank deposits and transfers, things like that. Now, we have one more menu in QuickBooks Online, and that's the gear icon, okay? This is kind of like your preferences menu in QuickBooks Online. It's over here in the top right. We've got our gear icon, and we've got a few different things that we can access. Basically, if you can't find what you're looking for in the nav bar and you can't find what you're looking for from the new button, the next place to check is the gear icon, and it'll probably be here. So one thing I wanna do is actually go into the account and settings menu so we can take a look at the preferences here. And, and we've got preferences divided up by a bunch of different categories about applying credits, default email messages, and things like that. But I wanna point out just a few of them to you because as we know, when you set up a company file, the first thing you need to do is choose your preferences. And there are a few in here that you may use religiously in QuickBooks Desktop that I want to show you are actually available. So, of course, we have our normal company information, legal information, stuff like that. But if we come over here to our sales tab, we've got a few preferences that you're going to want to see. So if you're looking at wanting to customize your invoices, you can see that here. But you can also set net terms and preferred delivery methods in this field as well. We also have, if we scroll down, I wanna show you a very important thing. If you plan on using estimates, you're gonna to wanna to turn on this progress invoicing option if that's something that you're doing here, okay? But you can also set default messages uh, that go out with your invoices. And you can also see a few other options for reminders as well. If we jump over to expenses, this is something else that you wanna pay extra close attention to. If you want to use items, if you purchase items and you wanna put those on your purchase forms, and we'll see what that looks like here in a few minutes, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this track expenses, um, 
Oh, where is it? Where did it go? Oh, show items table on expensive purchase forms. This very top one. This is the very first one, right? We want to put that on there. And then we also, if you're interested in making items billable so that you can later add them to customer invoices, you're going to want to turn on track expenses and items by customer and make expenses and items billable as well. So those are there too. And then down at the very bottom, we have our advanced options. And this is where you'll find some of those preferences that you may already be familiar with in desktop. So you see where you can close the books, where you can set up your fiscal year. And then another big one for a lot of people is if you want to turn on account numbers, you've got that option to show, turn them on as well as show them in the chart of accounts later if that's something that you want to do. And I'll, I'll leave those on so that we can see what that looks like when we get back to the chart of accounts here in just a few minutes. If you wanted to use that projects tab that we were talking about, you'll want to turn on this option here. And I would recommend that as you are getting used to using QuickBooks Online, it can be really overwhelming with this new software because, you know, you kind of know what's going on, but things are in slightly different places. If you want to be able to really track where everything's going, I would turn off the options um, to, where did it go, in automation to automatically apply credits and automatically um, apply bill payments as well. So that way you can really keep track until you have a better understanding of where everything is of what is being applied to what so that way you don't get turned around but again we really encourage you to explore this window and make sure that your settings are set up the best for your business and another thing to point out is that the gear icon actually is where you can get to reconciliation and budgeting as well two really big features right and that's because you know of course you're going to do some of these you know once a month once a year but it's not something that you're going to access as often as you'll see in the more common things like the new button or the nav bar. Okay, so now, even if you don't take anything else away from this webinar, you know that you can get to anything you need in QuickBooks Online through one of those three menus, right? We've got the nav bar, we've got the new button, and then over here on the far right, we've got the gear icon. So with that knowledge, you are well on your way to getting back to business. And now I want to explore with you how we organize information. So let's go back to QuickBooks Desktop just to start with the familiar and move to the, to the new here. In Desktop, we have lists to help us keep track of the people and things that we do business with, right? It helps us to enter tra uh, information on transactions much more quickly, right? And just generally keep track of all the things in our business. So we know that when we open up the Customer Center, right, we get a pretty familiar view, right? We get a list of all our customers with their open balances to the right. And then if you click on a customer, right? You're going to see more detail information about all their contacts. And then we're going to see the transactions that make up how much they owe you, right? Like their invoices and payments and things like that. And of course, we're going to get similar information if we open the vendor center, right? All of our vendors with all of their balances and contact details and transactions here like that, right? So we're expecting all of this as well with the employee center as well. And these are our name lists, but we also use lists to help us categorize and organize the things that we buy and sell to customers, right? So to see those things, we go to list and select item list. We're gonna see a name of all of our different items that we sell to our customers. We'll see the descriptions that are on sales forms. We see the types. We see the account that they report to, right? And we see the price of those items. And this is where we can manage all of our items. We know we can click on things and edit them and stuff like that. Okay, and then of course, we also have our chart of accounts, which is gonna help us uh, see all of the accounts that help us categorize why our business spends and receives money. These things are really important, right? Yeah, of course they are. But we need to find out where they are in QuickBooks Online because we have all of the same information in QuickBooks Online. So let's jump back over to QuickBooks Online and see where we can find it. You can open most of your lists from the nav bar. They represent things that are already in QuickBooks, right? So for example, to see a list of all your customers, we've seen this once, I'm gonna to go to sales. You also might see invoicing. And then I'm gonna select customers here and that's gonna take me right to my customer list. And this window is essentially your customer center in QuickBooks Online. So you're gonna see all your customers' names. You're gonna see how much they owe you to the right. But you can also filter this list with the buttons along the top. So for instance, if I I select this overdue button, I'm going to see a list of the customers with overdue balances. I'm not going to see anybody that doesn't have an overdue balance. If I want to go back to the main 
list, I can actually click this clear filter or view all option, or I can click on the filter again to take it back off. And so now I'm back to seeing all of my customers at once. If I click this little gear icon here, I can actually add additional columns as well. So I could see the customer type or their emails, and then I can click the print or export icon if I wanna see those the list of customers as a report. Now, just like in QuickBooks Desktop, you can click on a customer's name to see more details. So I'm gonna see their contact information at the top here and a list of all their transactions along the bottom. If they have any projects, I'm also gonna be able to access any projects that go with that customer as well. Okay, now here's a pro tip. If you, when you first come into this customer's list, it's gonna look like this, or this customer detail information. You'll see something that looks very similar to this. Now, this little icon right here, it's got an arrow pointing at three small lines. This arrow actually lets us look at the customer list in a way that's a little bit more familiar for us as desktop users. So now I can easily switch between all of my customers and I can even type in the search bar to filter. So if I wanted to see something like, oh, there's my customer Sue Skis and I can click on her information and I can just clear out this filter to see all of my customers' names again. And I'm just scrolling up through that list, right? So this is a little bit more familiar for us and we like that a lot. If you wanna edit the customer, you can just choose edit here in their details screen. And that's gonna pull up the window where you can see all their details like their address and phone number. You're also gonna see where you can enter if they, you know, they're tax exempt or you have payment preferences that you wanna include. If you choose the additional info tab, you can enter their customer type and things like that. And we can make those changes there. But what if you wanna add a new customer, right? Again, new things happening every day. If you're in this view that we're in right now, you can click this small gray plus icon and that will let you add a new customer. But if you're on your main customers list, which is where you'll come if you choose sales customers, it's gonna come to this window. You can click this big green new customer button, right? And that's gonna bring up the window where you can add this. That said, just like in QuickBooks Desktop, you can quick add customers. So if I open up an invoice, We'll let that load. I can pull this up and I've got right at the top of my drop down list, add new. And this is true for vendors, employees, uh, products and services. Most of our list, just like in QuickBooks Desktop, you can add quickly by just clicking this add new button to enter that information and go back and enter details later on. Okay, let's go ahead and close that window. And we're ready now to move on to our vendor list. So to see our vendors, we're going to go to expenses and then select vendors. And this list is going to look very similar to the customer list and it's going to work the same way. So you're going to see all the names, all the balances. You see where you can filter across the top. So which vendors have purchase orders open, you right? And we can clear that filter as well. If you wanna add a new vendor, you can click it from here. If you wanna edit a vendor without clicking on their name, you can come over to the action drop down. And actually you can't do that. I thought you could. Oh well. Okay, so I can click on their name and then I can click the edit button here, right? And that's gonna bring up detailed information about the vendor that I can enter all the things that I wanna track about my vendors there. One important note about vendors is that just like QuickBooks Desktop, if you need to enter contractors, if you need to track payments for contractors so that you can issue 1099s at the end of the year, you do need to enter your contractors on the vendor list. And then when you're looking at that edit screen, if I scroll down, there's a box to track payments for 1099. And that's what's gonna make them a 1099 contractor is checking that option there. So that's an important note if that's something that you need to do. And again, this works the same way, the same little arrow with three lines is how we can get that more desktop looking view where we can easily switch between all of our different vendors that way. Now our employees list is gonna look very similar. Um, it's gonna have the same information. It's gonna work like this. Um, and that'll be in the payroll section, but let's talk about items now. Items in QuickBooks Online are actually called products and services. So to find that list, we're gonna to go to sales and select products and services. You can also get to it by clicking on the gear icon and you'll find it under this list section. So we've got products and services here as well. 
This list is your item list. They're exactly the same. They just have a different title because we're going to see the names of all of our items here. We're going to see their types. The types are the same, whether it's service, non-inventory or inventory items. We're going to see the sales price. We're going to see the description that you that appears on sales forms. And if I scroll to the top and I click this small gear icon again, I can check off different things that I want to see. So if I wanted to see the income account that it reported to, I could add that column here as well. And I can adjust the way these columns appear here as well. So that's our products and services. If I want to edit any of these items, so we'll come down and we'll say we want to edit our bolts item. I'm going to choose edit here in the action column and I can enter the name, the description. I can change the income accounts or the price. I can edit sales tax if you're tracking sales tax. If I click this show more link, I'll also see where I can check the box if I want to assign this to a purchases or an expense account because you record it on purchase forms and things like that. So that's very helpful there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and save and close that. If you want to add a new product or service, you can just click this new button and it's going to pull out that side window again where you can choose the type and then enter all the important details about that item. Now, for your very most important list, your chart of accounts, you're going to go all the way down here to accounting and select chart of accounts. By default, the chart of accounts is sorted by type here. So you're going to have your bank accounts, you're going to have your other assets, your fixed asset accounts, followed by all your liability accounts. I'm just scrolling down with my mouse here. Your equity accounts, income. If you get to the bottom and you're like, where are my expense accounts? You can come over here to the far right. We're only seeing 50 uh, list items at a time. I'm going to choose next and I can keep scrolling and see here's my cost of goods sold, followed by all of my expense accounts. If you want to see more items in a list at a time, I can actually choose like a hundred here, right? And that'll resort my list for me this way. If you want to resort the list, say you want to see it alphabetically, you can do that here. And then because I turned on that numbers feature, I'm seeing the numbers here. So if you had account numbers entered in on your chart of accounts, you would see those listed in the numbers column. And I can turn that off here by just unchecking number if that's not something I want to see anymore. Now, if you wanted to make one of these items inactive, and this is true on any of the lists we've looked at so far, I can click the action drop down and choose make inactive. That's going to remove it from my list, just like it does in QuickBooks Desktop, just to kind of keep my lists cleaned up a little bit. And same for uh, these accounts, I can click new. I can also come down here and choose edit. And so I'm going to see my edit screen this way. Another thing to note, this shouldn't be too big of a deal. Usually when you come over from QuickBooks Desktop, you're going to see windows that look very similar to mine. But if for any reason you're seeing something that looks very, very different, you can click the gear icon and choose this switch to business view option. Right. So when I choose switch to business view, I'm going to get a very different looking screen um, for my account. So if your chart of accounts is feeling very, very different when you go to make new, it pulls out. Um, that's not doing it. Of course, it wouldn't do it. But if it looks very different, you can switch uh, back to accountant view here and your screen's going to look like mine. Okay, another thing to point out is if you're wanting, if you're somebody who likes to look at the register for any of your bank accounts or balance sheet accounts, you can choose view register here in the action column for any of your accounts and you're going to see what looks very much like a register. You can click on the headers to sort it if you want to see all your payments, you want to sort it by balance or deposit, things like that. You can also switch between registers here, which is very, very handy if you're spending a lot of time in your registers. If you click this little filter, this is going to help you find transactions. So you're looking at, you can search by amount, you can filter in a specific date range, by payee type, all these different things as well. Now, this brings us to a really important idea. Before I show you the transaction windows, I want to show you a few tricks to kind of help you find things in QuickBooks Online just a little bit more easily. So first, QuickBooks Online has a very powerful search function. So when I come up to the magnifying glass that I see up here, I'm going to see a list of all of my most recent transactions. This is very cool. And I can just click on them to open them up. So if I want to look at this check here, I can click on that. It's going to open in this screen and I'm going to see all the details about that check. If I press escape on my keyboard, just like in QuickBooks desktop, it's going to close that window for me and return me to the screen I was on. 
in the magnifying glass, I can also search here uh, for any transactions, anything. I can look for customers, I can look for vendors, I can type in names, types of transactions, I can type in reference numbers or amounts. If I need even further searching ability, I can come down here to the very bottom and choose advanced search. And then I can actually enter in some constraints, some parameters to help me narrow everything down even further. Another, another useful thing for us to know is how to look at multiple windows at once. So if I switch back over here to QuickBooks Desktop, you know, we can have our invoice open. We can also be looking at our profit and loss report at the same time. Oh, what is going on? Okay, there we go. And I can, I can have these multiple windows open, which is really handy as you're referencing different things. Actually, we can have this in QuickBooks Online too, but only if you know how to do it. So here's your pro tip. I'm gonna switch back to QuickBooks Online. Because you're using QuickBooks Online in a browser, you can actually use multiple tabs or multiple windows to look at multiple windows at once. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and just pull up a basic profit and loss report here. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and I'm gonna choose profit and loss. So I can see my profit and loss report here, but let's say you also wanna look at a specific invoice. If I come over here and select new, and then I right click the invoice, I have the options to open it in a new tab or to even open it in a new window. So I'm gonna choose open link in new tab. And what that's gonna do, you notice up here at the very top, I can see my invoice tab opening. And this is really, really handy because now I can enter things on my invoice. I can go back to my profit and loss. Say I wanna also look at my balance sheet. I can do this again, right click, choose open link in new tab to open up another tab for my reports page, scroll down, I can run the balance sheet. This works with any links in QBO. So I can look at my balance sheet, I can go to invoice, I can do things, I can look at my profit and loss statement, I could go back to my dashboard, I can jump to my balance sheet, to my invoice, my balance sheet, right, over and over, and I can bounce around in all these different windows. So you can be signed in to QuickBooks Online and have multiple windows open to reference different things. And that's really handy for us to know. Okay. So that's just a few tips to kind of help keep us oriented as we begin working in uh, your QuickBooks Online account. But let's go ahead and get down to the most important things, how to record transactions. So let's go back into desktop. Again, we wanna move from the familiar to the unfamiliar here. Let's say that we want to make an invoice for our customer, Amy's Bird Sanctuary. So in desktop, when you want to open an invoice, uh, we're just going to click create invoices and we want to record a few main things, right? So first we want to enter our customer. So that's the who of the transaction. So I'm going to choose Amy's Bird Sanctuary here. And then we want to enter the information about when the transaction happens, right? We can enter the date we issue the invoice. We can issue the terms, how, much, how long the customer has to pay you. We can enter the due date, right? Which the terms can actually change so the customer knows when they need to pay you by, right? We always want them to see that. And again, this is the when part and it also pulls in their uh, contact information, their addresses and things like that. But then we also have our specific line items. So what is your customer buying or what are you charging them for, right? So here we can choose from our item list, we can choose design and it's gonna pull in the price and the description and all those different things, right? And then we have our very important, the very bottom, we have our total here, right? And this is how we know what our customer is going to see. This is how we record our sales. All of these elements are the same that we'll find in QuickBooks Online. We've got the who, the when, the what and the how much down here at the bottom. Okay, let's go see how that looks in QuickBooks Online. And remember in QuickBooks Online, we have, when we want to open new transactions, right? We're gonna go to the new button and we're gonna select invoice to open up that invoice. Okay, same information we wanna do. Let's find our four elements for the customer the who you want to send the invoice to, the customer drop down is just like in desktop. You're going to see a list of all of your customers to select. You can enter, you can just select the name from the list. You can also start typing in the customer's name here and it's going to pull up the customer's name. In the middle section, we're going to have our when information. So you can enter today's date for the invoice. And then when you select the terms, QuickBooks is going to automatically calculate the due date for you. 
One of the first differences though that we see here is that our items, as I mentioned earlier, are now called products and services. This is the same list though. So we can still click the drop down. we can scroll through this list, we can type in this list, and we can choose design, we can press tab to move on to the next field, and it's gonna pull the description and the price and all those things directly from our defaults that we have set up in the products and services list. And now you can see the total down here at the bottom, but one of the really cool things, if I scroll back up to the top, is our balance due is also going to be up here in very bold black letters at the top right. So our how much is usually going to be up here at the top for quick reference for us. Okay, a few other things I want to point out about the invoice before we move on is that if you click this gear icon here, this is actually going to be the settings for the invoice. So you can turn on extra fields like shipping addresses, or if you're using any custom fields, like I've got sales rep, I can track my sales reps with a custom field here, or I can turn on service dates or take off products and services, things like that. I can do that in that window as well. I can also print invoices by clicking this bottom here at the button, clicking this button here at the bottom. Wow, that was, that was something else. Okay, so I can print or preview invoices by clicking this button here at the bottom. I can make recurring, which is the same as memorizing a transaction and set up a schedule as well. And I can customize my invoices here. Another cool thing that's true about all of your transaction windows is that if you come over here to the far left corner, you're gonna see this little icon that looks like a clock but with an arrow going around it. Stands for going back in time, right? Doing a little time travel. You can actually, this is similar to those previous buttons that you see on your invoices in QuickBooks Desktop where I can go look at invoices that I've entered in the past. So I can scroll back to this invoice for Sue's skis and I can actually see that this invoice is open. Once you've saved an invoice, you're gonna see a button just under the balance due under the how much portion that says receive payment. And this is where we can actually see that screen. If we just click on it, it's gonna let us pay this invoice once the customer actually pays you. And this screen is gonna record the same information as a payment would in QuickBooks Desktop. We see the customer's name along the top, then we're gonna see the date along with the payment method, so I can choose how they paid me. And then I can choose for deposit too. I can actually choose undeposited funds, which is what your payments default to in QuickBooks Desktop, or I can choose the bank account that the payment's gonna to go to. But if you wanna group it with other payments, you're gonna to wanna to choose undeposited funds. And you can learn more about that in our next webinar on money and transactions. And again, the link to sign up for those is posted in the chat right now. After that, you can select the invoice you want to pay or apply the payment to from the outstanding transactions window and you can see how much is being paid here in the amount received window how much is being applied and those kind of things so once you've got that payment information entered you can save that but for now we're going to go ahead and close out of that window now what if you mostly record sales receipts? You've got those too. You can click new and then select sales receipt and you're gonna see a screen that looks really similar to your invoice. So you're gonna enter all the same information. You're gonna enter the who, you're gonna enter the when, you're gonna scroll down, you can see your products and services to enter what they paid for. And then when you look at the top, you'll see how much. So this looks very similar. The main things that are different here is that you're actually gonna choose a payment method in this screen. And again, you can choose undeposited funds from the deposit to field as well. So let's close this window and move on now to another set of transactions, looking at how you can actually record spending money. So we'll jump back to QuickBooks Desktop here, and this is one of the biggest differences that is you're gonna kind of encounter with QuickBooks Online. In QuickBooks Desktop, when you wanna show that you spent money from your bank account, you select this write checks window, right? That can be a little confusing when you do this because you do it whether you swiped your debit card, whether you sent an ACH transfer, or whether you actually wrote a check, you still go to write checks, right? But when you do fit click write checks, right? You're gonna enter your bank account, you enter the number, you enter who you paid, but then you've got these two tabs down here for expenses and items. And if you're entering the category, say you're paying for advertising, you would just select your expense account on the expenses tab. Or if you're paying for items, you would enter those items on the items tab. And again, of course you need to enter all that same information in QuickBooks Online, but we're gonna approach it just a little bit differently. So let's go back to QuickBooks Online. I'm gonna switch here and we'll see why it's different. So let's start to say, 
we need to enter a new transaction. We're going to select new, but under vendors, we have two options. We have expenses and checks. Let's enter a check first. So suppose we wrote a check to our accountant, Books by Bessie. Once again, the form's going to take up the whole screen when I open it up, and you're going to notice almost immediately it looks quite surprisingly similar to the invoice for being such a different transaction. One of the things that QuickBooks Online did when they designed the windows was try to keep the formatting similar so you only have to learn one look, right? So at the top, we have the who of our check, who we actually paid. So we can start typing in Books by Bessie to bring up our vendor's name here. And then at the top, just like with our check in QuickBooks Desktop, we can enter which account we're spending the money out of. But notice only bank accounts are available right here because we're looking at a check. Okay. And then we can enter the payment date when we paid it. And then we can enter the category details section. And things look a little bit different here for our what section. Category details is exactly like the expenses tab in QuickBooks Desktop. From the category field, you're going to select the expense account that best describes your purchase. So in this case, I can start typing in accounting to pull up my accounting account because that's what describes this. I can also enter a description, which is what would be um, like a memo here so I can say um, accounting consultation right and then I can tab over or click into the amount field and enter two hundred dollars excuse me then off to the right because I turned on those features earlier to track by customer and billable I have those options here so I could assign this expense to a customer I could mark it as billable things like that but you're wondering Okay, but what if I buy things? What if I want to put things on my purchase forms? Down here is the item details tab. If you get in here and you can't find it, it might be because it's collapsed. So if I click that arrow, I can expand that out just like that. And then I can choose the products or services that I want to enter instead. Now, if I scroll back up and I want to print the check, I can check this print later option. I can also uncheck it to enter the check number right now. So you might be wondering, Okay, this all seems pretty normal, but what is the expense form for? Well, let's say that I entered, I ordered some office supplies online, right? So I went online and I just entered my debit card information on the website. Well, in QuickBooks Desktop, you would use the right checks window and you'd probably enter debit in that check number field. In QuickBooks Online, you're going to click the new button and use the expense form. So we'll choose new expense. In this window, it's going to look almost identical to the check window, except for two things. Now, we don't have a check number field. Instead, we have a reference number field, okay? And you can't print a check from this form, okay? But you don't need to because it was an online purchase. You also have a place to record the payment method. So was it a credit card or an ACH? And this is where one of the things is really different, right? In QuickBooks Desktop, to enter a credit card charge, you use that enter credit card charges window. But in QuickBooks Online, the payment account is going to tell QuickBooks whether it's a credit card or an ACH or debit card type transaction. So if I choose a bank account, this represents a transaction from my bank that was not a check. If I choose credit card, it's going to be a credit card type of transaction, right? But we have the other things here. We can still enter our category details. We can still enter our item details. We can still enter who we paid and we can still enter when we paid them. Right. So the key takeaway is this. If you physically hand wrote a check or you need to print a check to send to a vendor, you're going to use the check window for everything else. Credit card charges, bank accounts that aren't checks. You can record an expense. And that's mainly because of that check number. Or if you actually need to print the check, you have to use the check form so that you can print the check. OK, but what about bills? You ask. Okay, I've still got you covered, no worries. If we click the new button and select bill here, the forms in QuickBooks Online designed mostly to lay out information the same way so you can quickly understand where to put things. So at the top, we see who sent us a bill, we enter the date of the bill, we have our terms just like the invoice window, and we can enter the category details or the item details here, right? You can do all of that just the same way. When you're ready to pay a bill, you can go to the new button and select pay bills here. And you're going to see a list of all of your bills and you can select that. Well, you can click on them to open them up. I was trying to select it here, check it off. You can check off the bills that you want to pay. You're going to choose the account that you're making the payment from. If you need to print checks for each of those bill payments, you check the print later option or you can uncheck it and move on. 
If you wanted to pay the bills with Melio through QuickBooks Online, you can choose this option to schedule payments online and that'll take you to where you can set up your Melio account and pay things directly from QuickBooks Online. But if you don't wanna mess with that or if you're just recording bill payments that you've already made, you're gonna click this drop down arrow and you'll have your other options for saving. You can choose save and close, save and print, or just save, right? So I can save and close those if I wanted to do that. Now, the last thing that I want to show you with transactions is something that many of you may not currently use in QuickBooks Desktop, but it may be one of the reasons you decided to switch to QuickBooks Online, and that is banking. So let's go to the banking tab, and we do have, will have an entire webinar just on online banking where you're going to get to really explore the ins and outs of how this window works, but I do want to point out a few things. So once you set up your accounts, you're going to see them listed across the top here, and you can switch between them and see the different transactions that you're going to add, right? But the other thing to point out is that if you have been using a more recently updated uh, version of QuickBooks Desktop and you are using the most recent version of online banking, this is actually going to feel very familiar to you because that window was designed much like QuickBooks Online. But again, if you want to learn more about how online banking works and all of that, you can go to that webinar here in just a few weeks. Okay, so we've entered all of our transactions. That means we're ready to run reports. As I mentioned earlier, we can see all of the available built-in reports by clicking the reports button. And this is our reports center, right? This is where we can run all of our reports from, right? And you're gonna see many of the same reports you're familiar with. Uh, we still have the same three types of reports. We've got summary reports, we've got detail reports, we've got list reports, so I can see my um, customer balance summary report. I can look at my expenses down here. If I scroll down, I can look at my expenses by vendor summary, purchases by vendor detail, all these different types of reports. If I want to find something, I can type it in here. But for right now, let's just run a basic profit and loss report so we can see how we can actually make changes. So when you first come to the report, it's going to center the information for you. But if you actually scroll up to the top, and you can use the scroll bar over here. I use the scroller on my mouse. You're gonna see where you can actually make a few changes and customize the report. So we can choose from the drop down. we can choose um, preset date. So for instance, if I wanna report for just this quarter or I can enter my own date ranges. If you're somebody who really liked the date short codes in QuickBooks Desktop, they all work. They're exactly the same short codes in QuickBooks Online. So if you, want to type, you know, just type in the date with no dashes or use any of the letter tricks for the date shortcut, uh, shortcuts, you can do that here. But so I can choose the date range. I can change how the columns are displayed. Like if I wanted a monthly, month by month comparison, or I want to do any of these other comparisons, I can switch between cash and accrual here. Any changes that I make here though, I have to click run report, just like I did in QuickBooks desktop to see them update here. Another thing to point out is that if you want to change the title, you can just click on the title and edit the information. If you're using a very recent version of desktop and you got uh, familiar with the collapse and expand options, I can actually click collapse here and that's going to hide all of my sub accounts. And if I scroll back up and choose expand, I can see all of my sub accounts here again. And I actually don't have to refresh to do that. I can email this report by clicking the email button here or I can print the report by clicking the print icon. If I click the export icon, I'll have three options. I can either export it to Excel, I can export it as a PDF, or very handily, I can export it to Google Sheets as well. If I click the small gear icon, all that changes is how far apart the rows are. So that's the only real thing we're looking at there. Okay, now how do you actually customize this? If I click the customize button, I'm gonna see a few other things that I can do. So if you wanna see your negative numbers in red or you don't wanna see cents or something like that, the filter is of course the most powerful thing you can do with reports. So if I wanna see a profit and loss for just a specific customer, just a specific vendor, or just a specific profit product and service, I can do all of that in this window. When I click run report, it's gonna update it with any changes I made. If I really like the changes I've made, if there's anything I wanna save, I can choose save customization, and then I'm gonna put in what I want to save here. And this is just like memorizing a report in QuickBooks Desktop. So I can say quarterly profit and loss, we'll just say P&L here. I can add it to a group, and then I can click save here. When I'm ready to go back and I wanna run this report again, what I can do is go back to my reports tab here, 
right? And I'm going to choose the custom reports and I'm going to see any of the custom reports, anything that I save in this list. If I click the edit option here, I'm also going to see where I can toggle on how to set up an email schedule. And the really cool thing about this is that I can enter in emails and I can give it a little message. I can say, you know, maybe I want to see my quarterly PL at the end of every quarter and I want to email that out to certain people in my business. I can put all their emails in here. They don't have to be users of the company file to see it. I can also attach the report as an Excel file. And so that's really, really handy here. So that's one thing you can do, but you can only do it once you've created that custom report. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that window. And when I do actually wanna run the report, I'm just gonna click on the name and it'll pull up the report with all the settings that I already entered in. Okay, last thing that I wanna point out is if you are somebody who is hoping to use QuickBooks Online because you're managing users, we do talk about this in the recording of Amy's class, but just in case you wanted to see that, if you click the gear icon and go to manage users, this is where you're gonna be able to add any users to your account. It's also where you can see any accountants that you've added as well. So you can add users here. You can see that I'm the primary admin. You go into the gear icon to find those options. And that brings us close to the end of our class. So we've talked about how to get around in QuickBooks Online. We recorded basic transactions. We learned some tips and tricks. We looked at reports and all these different things. So congratulations. You've officially leveled up in QuickBooks. Achievement unlocked. Your next task is to take what you learned here and try to get started using QuickBooks Online for your business. Finally, thank you so very much for attending today. I hope that you sign out with more understanding than when you arrived and that you're feeling more confident that you can use QuickBooks Online to do your bookkeeping. I'm so glad that I was able to be a part of this journey with you. Thank you so much again and happy QuickBooksing.